Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today, we take a look at this follow focus from DF Digital Photo. This is the Climber FF15B. And just full disclaimer, this product was sent to me for review. All right, so I've been using this follow focus for about, I would say, two, three months now. So I've put it through its paces. I've taken it with me on, uh, on my shoots. And so far, it's worked out great. Uh, as you can see here, this is made out of metal and plastic, or it's hard aluminum. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard build. I, I have no complaints about it. For a budget follow focus, this comes in at $260. I mean, I can't really compare it to high-end follow focus systems that cost you know a couple thousand dollars. There's actually, you know, I can't believe it. There's a couple that might cost you two, three thousand dollars. This is only two sixty. So uh, I gotta say, for what I need, I mean, I'm only pulling focus ever so slightly. So I just ne need a little slight movements. I'm not doing super complicated A and B points. However, if I do need to do that, this allows me to do it. It has uh, these little two knobs you can see here, A and B stops, and this is uh, this this is a stopper, which you can also remove if you don't need it. Um, so I've gone from A to B points. I set the A point and B point, and it has, it has hard stops for me to quickly uh, stop that focus so I don't accidentally go over. It's very easy to install, you know, it has the knobs, uh, one here for the 50 millimeter rods. Here is to slide it back and forth. And then the angle of the follow focus itself. You can see here, I slide it in, lock it into the rods, bring it in, lock it in. And there it is, it's very smooth. Uh, another thing you could do, you could remove the stopper up here and you know that way you don't have any hard stops because sometimes you might be going more than 360 and you don't want to have these going or happening. Another thing you could do is uh, you can get a dry erase marker like this one right here and you can you know mark up A and B and C and D points however many you want. That way you can go and do complicated uh, rack focusing. All right, so another thing you could do is um, switch the location of the gear. So if I loosen this right now, it's on this side, I can flip it to be on this side. And it's just a matter of unscrewing a knob. I'm going to put it on this side. Give me a second. So now the gear is on this side. And if let's say I want to put the follow focus on this side of the camera, which sometimes I've done, I can just quickly do it and put, put it on this side. Or sometimes it just maybe I'm putting a map box that goes on rails. Maybe I need the gear closer to this side or depending, you know, it's, it's nice to have that option. So I'm glad they included that in there. Um, you know, I gotta say that so far, I'm happy with the build quality. That's the most important. I've had other follow focus uh, that have broken on me after a couple months use. And so, you know, I don't use it. Uh, I don't use follow focus quite often. It's just here and there when I need them. It always looks nice to have them and, and it def definitely simplifies the process of pulling focus. Um, so I'm definitely not in the market for spending a couple grand on a, on a follow focus. I think that's when you're doing more narrative work that involves high precision. Um, in that case, sometimes, you know, we end up just renting the follow focus instead of purchasing it right out. Okay. So, you know, th that's pretty much it. You know, the last thing I would want to mention is that it has this rubber grip on the handle. You know, you get pretty sweaty on set and so this prevents your, your fingers from slipping. Um, yeah, so if there's anything I forgot to mention, if you want to know more about this follow focus, uh, please ask me down below in the comment section. There'll be links in the description if you want to check it out. And as always, I appreciate you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.